Do you struggle with chunky, wide nails? Do you want them to be super fit like me? Greg's gonna show you how to do it right now. The biggest mistake that a lot of beginners or students make when they're either tipping or sculpting is they either choose the wrong size tip, meaning too large, or they sculpt a free edge that's too wide. This is going to set you up for disaster. It's going to create a lot of bulkiness at the free edge, which is going to require a lot of file finishing to get it to look decent. What I'm going to do is show you some tips and tricks so that you could reduce that bulkiness and have a really easy time file finishing to perfection. So before we actually get into uh, building out the nail, I wanna be able to diagram something. If this is the nail, right? If this is the nail, right? A lot of students, what they'll end up doing is when they're sculpting, they don't use the growth channels as their guide, right? This is really important. The guide right here, if you look at the finger, the growth channels are going to be your guideline. You do not want to pick a tip that's wider than the growth channel, and you do not want to sculpt a free edge that's wider than these lines right here on the natural nail, or on your mannequin when you're actually training. Okay, so here's the thing. We have to make sure to stay within these guidelines so that when we build the nail, it's going to be a really well sculpted nail that is going to be easy to file finish. All right, let's go ahead and put a nail form on the nail. And I want to show you what not to do. Okay, a lot of you guys are starting out. Um, I can imagine once you are successful with putting forms on, it's, it's a huge accomplishment because you're setting yourself up for success when it comes to actually sculpting enhancements. So what we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to get a bead that's going to stay within these guidelines right here. It's important that you have the right consistency when you're actually building the free edge. So a lot of you that are beginning Let's say you are successful submersing your brush and you're successful picking up the right size bead. What you don't want to do is set it down to the free edge and have a consistency that starts to run because what you're going to end up doing most of the time is trying to chase it. So a lot of you that are beginning, what you end up doing is you end up sliding it up to the corners just like this, right? You can see, right? I can slide it up to the side. I can slide it up to the side. Take a look. Right. For those of you guys that are starting, you could see how thin it is in the middle right here and you could see how bulky it is. I'm already past. You can see if I actually draw a line with the tip of my brush in between. Right. I've gone past my growth channels. OK, let's go ahead and take this off. So what we want to be able to do to stay within those guidelines is we have to have the consistency that's not going to move. And how we're going to achieve that is picking up slightly smaller pearl. I'm going to submerse my brush. I'm going to tap it. I'm going to bounce, bounce. And what I want to do is I want to drain my pearl on the back side just like this. Now, you're going to notice that when I set it right here to the form, it's going to stay stable. What I want to do is I want to walk it up even to this growth channel. So as I start from the middle and I start walking it from the top, you're going to notice that it's very easy for me to walk it even with that growth channel from the very, very top of the pearl. Same thing on the opposite side. What I want to be able to do is walk it from the top of the pearl within the guidelines. So as soon as I get down to the side, I don't slide it up to the corner. I slide it even, walk it up to the top so that I could tuck it absolutely perfect with my sides. And as I brush this forward and make it even, you can see from the top profile that I have not gone past my sidewalls. I have stayed within the range right here. So let's say you got to this part. You're all set, you're ready to rock and roll. And you're like, okay, I've been watching Greg and I see the consistency that he's working with. You're very successful picking it up. You come in, 
you bounce, 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 you get yourself a nice fluffy pearl, you go ahead and you set it right down to the cuticle area, you start working it around, and then what you notice after you get it is that it starts to run to the sides, and, you're, and then you start to panic. And then the first thing you do is you start to brush it from the middle. Notice that when I brush it from the middle first, it literally splits the acrylic out to the outside. And then what you're left with is a bulky, basically, perimeter, right? So you can see how wide the nail got because I pulled it from the middle, all right? All right, so let's say you get to this point and you start to set this down and then you're like, okay, I need to fill the free edge. And then you take your bead and you take another bead that's really, really big. You don't set it right here. You end up setting it right here to the front, okay? And then what you end up doing, again, is working it to the side and, and you're just bringing it up and you're pushing it out. You're, you're struggling blending the acrylic from here to here. And what you end up doing is creating a really, really wide structure that doesn't blend well. You can see how wide the structure is here. What I end up doing again is I'm working it side to side. The acrylic ends up drying. You're not happy. You can see that the acrylic didn't kind of join the initial pearl uh, flush to the natural nail. So you decide to go in for more. You're like, okay, if I grab more and I set it right here, right, to fill in that space, right, all you keep doing is adding to the surface. And as you can see, I end up building a really, really wide acrylic nail. So the biggest problem with this is that I don't have the right consistency when I'm setting it down and I'm setting it in the wrong position. I feel that a lot of students or beginners, when they set the acrylic down, they get nervous. So they stare at it, hoping that the product is going to work magic, right? And, and they constantly work the product from side to side. You have to be able to adjust based on how the acrylic flows. That means if you have to turn your brush backwards and kind of brush it into the body of the nail, those are things that you're going to have to act if the product is drying too quickly. So this right here, again, ends up becoming really, really wide. And depending on how much acrylic you actually build on the nail can be really, really thick, which is going to set you up for disaster. I wanna be able to show you, look at this with the spatula. If I was to take the nail and line this up at my growth channels, Right? You can see that if I'm actually just kind of, kind of cutting in some lines, so I've, I've gone that much farther out, which is a lot of hand filing. It's going to take you probably 20 to 30 minutes more to get all 10 nails filed finished into perfection. All right, so let's go back to building the free edge and I'm gonna show you what to do so that you don't have this type of mess. Let's go ahead and pick up the right size pearl. I'm gonna go ahead and submerse my brush. All right, I'm gonna try to pull out, uh, I'm gonna tap it a couple times, pull out some good monomer. I'm going to bounce a couple of times. I'm gonna get a smaller size pearl. I'm going to quickly drain it. I'm going to set it to the free edge so it doesn't run. And then I'm gonna work it from the center all the way out, even with the growth channel, and then walk it from the top, and then follow my growth channel so that I have a really nice, thin extension. Doesn't have to be thick. You're going to build your strength with the body and your blending beads. So as long as I keep it within my guidelines, as you can see, this is going to set me up for initial success. We just go ahead and straighten everything out. Okay, now when we apply the body, this is really, really important. The consistency that I have, right, is going to set you up so that when you brush the acrylic forward, it's going to blend around the perimeter of the nail with ease. The way I hold my brush and I contour to the shape of the nail is also going to determine whether I stay within those guidelines. Check this out. I submerse my brush and I lightly tap 
and I bounce, bounce, bounce to get myself a nice fluffy pearl. Three, two, one, and I go ahead and set this down. I'm going to have a really nice consistency that's going to be very, very easy to push around the perimeter of the nail. Now here's the thing, as soon as I do that, I literally take the tip of my brush and start pulling the surface down. When I start to pull, I pull from my sides, down through the front of the nail, and then take the tip of my brush. Notice how I contour. So I'm staying within the guidelines, but you can see as I pull through from the sides and then from the front, I'm able to shape it, right? I'm able to shape it nice and round around the perimeter of the nail. Not only that, but by brushing it down the side, what I'm actually able to do is I'm actually able to kind of seal it and get it really, really tight to the sides as you can see right there, All right? I don't have any ledges. You can see from the top, how round it is, right? I don't have a lot of bulkiness past the sides. I've stayed within my guidelines, okay? So depending on how much acrylic you use is going to determine how far or how thick it is when you're brushing it forward from the front. I'm not brushing it from the back. As soon as I touch it tight, I start with the tip of my brush from here and I start to brush it and I literally start from here and end here. I don't touch this area. I'm using the bottom half of the pearl to brush forward so that I have that nice round contour from side to side. If you're looking at the side profile, what I need to do is I need to be able to fill the acrylic from this point to this point. I don't need to pile it up back here. I need to literally start from here to here. So when I set my pearl down, I don't wanna push from here. I'm gonna rotate my brush as I set it down. I'm going to press it down and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to blend backwards and then use the body of my brush to again stay within these guidelines. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to submerse my brush. I'm going to get a nice bead. I'm not gonna drain it. I'm going to set it right down here. Notice how I blend it. And then I, what I could do is you can see I'm taking the tip of my brush and blending it in. So it leaves all the excess to the front. At this point, I wipe my brush. And then I start to use the body of my brush to get it even from side to side. So again, I'm using the body of my brush. Notice how I'm walking back over the top. I'm not brushing it yet. All I'm doing is using the body of my brush to walk it over the top, staying within these guidelines so that I have an even structure from side to side that's able to fill the gap in between the body and the free edge that you built from the beginning. Let's go ahead and even out the tip with the side of my brush. And as you can see, I'm actually able to sculpt a nail and everything is within those guidelines. So once the acrylic is dried, you have to remember that the first part of perimeter shaping is going to set you up so that when you file the enhancement into shape, you're going to have a nice slender look on the nail. What I mean by that is this, notice my hand file, it needs to stay connected to the whole entire side and I'm keeping it dead straight. I'm not opening it up when I'm filing. So as I file from cuticle to free edge, I'm building a really, really straight wall from this point to this point. It's the same on the opposite side. If I have my hand file here connected and I'm filing up and I'm keeping it connected to the whole entire side, notice that I'm going to have a really nice straight wall from here all the way to the back. I'm going to get my lower arches into shape. I'm going to taper my free edge. And just go ahead and file this really well into shape. File in one direction coming down. The best part about it is once you have the nail built out and shaped, all you're doing is reducing bulk around the perimeter of the nail 
It's going to be very, very easy for you to file finish with your hand file once you've taken the majority of the excess down. The amount of time that I actually have to spend file finishing is not long at all. So you can see, once I shape from here to here, you can see from this profile, you can look at how straight my sides are going to be. Everything, the file is connected all the way to the back. And I have a nice even structure from side to side. Hey guys, what's going on? We hope you love our videos. Let us know in the comments below what you want to see next. To see more, head over here. To subscribe to our channel, head over here.